A three-year-old boy presents to the emergency department with dysphagia. His dad reports that he was fine until last night. This morning, he woke up having difficulty breathing. He is in obvious acute respiratory distress. He's drooling and he has this positioning as seen in the picture. What anatomical region is affected? A. Bronchioles B. Subglottis C. Superglottis or D. The trachea This question introduces us to the very high yield topic of epiglottitis. Wheez and strider are common sounds that we will encounter, especially in the pediatric population. But today we'll be focusing on some of the most common causes of strider, including epiglottitis and croup. Let's start the discussion by focusing on epiglottitis first. Epiglottitis commonly affects patients up to the age of 7 years old in the pediatric population. However, it's not confined to the pediatric population because adults can also be affected. The organisms involved in epiglottitis include H. flu, the strep species, and Staph aureus. In unvaccinated people, the most common cause is H. flu. That's why the number one way how to prevent epiglottitis is, of course, with a hip vaccine. And here we see the classic thumbprint sign seen in epiglottitis. So, Patients with epiglottitis have a supraglottic stenosis. This results in very classic clinical features. And these clinical features can be remembered with this easy mnemonic. Just remember the capital D. Kind of feels like Sesame Street here, but bear with me. And look at all these Ds. So we have dysphagia, drooling, respiratory distress, tripod stand, elevated temperature, and inspiratory strider. These are all extremely high yield because question stems can approach these in different ways. For example, we can see options where they're trying to confuse you, putting options like expiratory strider versus inspiratory strider. But of course, you won't be confused because you are watching this video right here. So another important thing to note is that they use a tripod stand to help them improve their breathing. So in the tripod position, they have their head kind of slightly leaning forward and their tongue is sticking out and they have this position because it allows maximum air entry into the lungs. So if you're seeing a patient with suspected epiglottitis, we should avoid laying them down on their back. These patients are classically described as having a toxic appearance, just looking very, very ill and having a lot of difficulty breathing. Well, the question now is how do we manage these patients? And the priority is to secure the airway. The best initial step is endotracheal intubation. However, if that's failed or it cannot be done for any reason, then we move on to surgical airways, such as a tracheotomy or a cricothyroidotomy. So we secured the airway, great. But now we have to consider the fact that the whole reason why this even happened is because of an infection with H. flu, um, staph aureus, or some sort of strep species. So we have to give them antibiotics. And the antibiotics of choice are ceftriaxone and vancomycin. So ceftriaxone is given to cover H. flu and the strep species. However, vancomycin is given to cover staph aureus. So with the combination of these two antibiotics, we're basically treating or covering all the possible bugs that can lead to epiglottitis. So for extra points, remember that if we do a detailed oropharyngeal exam, this can lead to laryngospasm, which can of course worsen the patient's already acute respiratory distress. So it is recommended that we avoid doing this detailed oropharyngeal exam. It's also been reported that even doing other tests such as blood work can cause laryngospasms. 
So back to our initial question here. So just to emphasize the position that this patient is in with the tripod stand, you can see that his head is slightly leaning forward to help increased air entry and breathing. So he has epiglottitis. For epiglottitis, this is a supraglottic infection. So the answer is option C. If you are liking this content so far, be sure to power up the like button and hit subscribe. Whenever you like videos, it lets me know what type of high yield content you do like so I can produce even more. So let's continue. And now we're going to talk about croup, which also causes stridor. So epiglottitis was caused by bacteria. However, for croup, it's caused by parainfluenza virus, which is an RNA virus. And croup is also called laryngotracheal bronchitis. But I'm just saying croup for short here. So what are the clinical features for croup? Well, typically, these patients have a prodrome of a upper respiratory tract infection, and it classically occurs in patients between three months to three years, which is a bit younger than patients who are affected by epiglottitis. So once they have this prodrome, then they go on to develop an inspiratory strider and a seal bark cough. This is so, 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 so important to remember the seal bark cough seen in croup. Another high yield fact to be aware of is this classic x-ray finding, which is the steeple sign. Take good notes of it because you might just see it on exam day. The treatment of croup depends on whether the symptoms are mild or severe. So if it's mild, that means that they have no inspiratory strider at rest. In this instance, we give the patient a single dose of steroids. However, for severe croup, that means that there is inspiratory strider present at rest. And we give them steroids and nebulize epinephrine. But what if, if all of that fails? We give the steroids, we give epinephrine, we give humidified air, but none of it is working. So what do we do? Well, then we have to move on to intubation and mechanical ventilation. So this is indicated for failed medical management or if the patient has impending respiratory distress. Now let's review and compare croup and epiglottitis. So remember that croup can affect patients up to seven years old, while patients who have epiglottitis are a bit younger, affecting patients between the ages of three months to three years old. But of course, epiglottitis can also affect adults. Croup is subglottic, while epiglottitis is superglottic. Also, the onset of croup is a bit slow, while in epiglottitis, it's very rapid. So it, for parents, it kind of seems like one minute their child is okay, the next minute they're having difficulty breathing, they're drooling, they're in this tripod stand. So just remember, rapid onset for epiglottitis. And of course in croup, they have the cough, the classic seal bark cough. While in epiglottitis, that isn't so common for them to have a cough. On x-ray, we see the steeple sign on the anterior-posterior view. However, on the lateral view, we see the thumb sign in epiglottitis. And of course, the organisms that cause croup and epiglottitis are very different. In croup, it's a virus. In epiglottitis, it's bacteria. So, parainfluenza virus commonly causes croup. While in epiglottitis, it can be caused by H. flu, strep species, or staph aureus. One key way that we can prevent epiglottitis is by giving the hip vaccine. Epiglottitis is an emergency, and the initial step is often securing the airway with endotracheal intubation. But for croup, they can be managed with medical treatment, such as steroids and epinephrine.
nebulize epinephrine. And if all of those medical treatments fail, then we move on to securing the airway and even providing mechanical ventilation. So let's do another practice question. A two-year-old presents to the emergency department with dyspnea. His mother said he was fine until this morning. He ate breakfast and started playing with his toys when he started to have difficulty breathing. Physical exam revealed unilateral wheezing. His respiratory rate is 40 and his temperature is 98. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Croup B. Foreign body aspiration C. Epiglottitis or D. Laryngo malacia. So this patient is experiencing acute dyspnea. In this case, we have to consider two main differentials, and that includes epiglottitis and foreign body aspiration. So that leaves us with option B and C. Option A is not the answer because in croup, they have a viral prodrome and the onset isn't that acute. In Langer Malaysia, it's the same and it's a bit more chronic in presentation. So, despite his acute dyspnea, his temperature is normal. And remember, in epiglottitis, these patients are described as looking very toxic. And remember the D's, dysphagia, drooling, elevated temperature. So this patient does not have the classic description of epiglottitis that we described before. And because it says that he was playing with his toys, and then he started to develop difficulty breathing, then the best answer here is option B, foreign body aspiration. And that brings us to the end of this review. If you liked this video, be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. As always, to continue learning more, click this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!